And you know what that means? It's time for all the toy news, action figure news of the week that interested me, that hopefully interests you. And there was a ton of stuff this week. We're going to get into some more Power Town controversy, a weekly segment at this point here on the channel. Tons of brand new wrestling news. We got some He-Man stuff. We got a talk of a Mattel Hasbro partnership. I'll give my take on that as well. We're going to dive into all of it right here in the Toy News of the Week. But of course, we always kick it off with a little housekeeping. Of course, Patreon. Don't forget about the Patreon channel. Your best chance to get all these videos early. Best chance to support the channel. You guys know by now what the Patreon is all about. And of course, we have the April Patreon giveaway going on right now. Uh, make sure you become a member of the Patreon uh, before April is up, as this is the giveaway this month. It is the brand new Royal Rumble Elite set there. Build the Doc Hendricks Build-A-Figure. We'll have a brand new, of course, giveaway for the month of May. We'll be talking about that uh, probably in next week's video, as May is here, if you can believe that by now. But that is the Patreon video. Got a long-awaited, much-anticipated, highly-requested video series coming to the Patreon. As a lot of you guys and gals out there always comment on the t-shirts I wear. I do have a very large t-shirt collection. I love a good t-shirt, as you guys know. Uh, repping Haunt today. Check out old Haunt. Uh, maybe we'll talk about them later, and maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. Uh, but, of course, I have a big t-shirt collection, and a lot of you guys and gals, like I said, have wanted me to do video series on that. So I grabbed my wife, and I said, help me out. Play my Vanna White. We're going to go through my t-shirt collection, and we're looking at probably, I don't know, 14 videos going through my t-shirt collection. Those will be up on Patreon. Might even keep those as a Patreon exclusive. I'm not sure exactly, uh, but we'll see. But those will be going up. I uh, just filmed a couple of those already. We'll see those in May. So become a Patreon member. There's a lot of content over there. There's always about 150 videos that are on Patreon that are not on traditional YouTube. So shout out to the old Patreon members out there uh, looking good. But let's dive in. Let's dive into the wrestling talk of the week first and we'll work our way through every news bit that came through this week as we usually do. I guess we'll talk WCW stage. We got about a week left to pre-order and to book this thing. It's not looking good, as we've been talking about. Right now, as of uh, filming, I just checked before I started filming here, 2,141 have backed. We're not even halfway there. Uh, unfortunately, it just looks like it's not going to happen. And there's a lot of reasons. I don't know if we need to do a long-form video uh, recapping the whole project. Re what went wrong? What was good? What was bad? What was ugly? Uh, back and forth on that. I don't know if we knew, need to do a video out there on this one. But unfortunately, I guess at the end of the day, we vote with our wallets. And the majority of people that were interested in this voted to say no. And it could have been for different reasons. They just didn't like the product. They didn't like the offering. They couldn't afford it at the time. They had other bills. There's a lot of stuff that uh, circles all into it together. And that's just the way it goes. And it'll be interesting to see what Mattel does in the future for future crowdfunders. I guess we'll have to stay tuned for that. We'll talk about it when that day does come here on the channel. But we did see from Ringside Collectibles, all oh, yes, use discount code Kyle, save yourself 10%. Ringside did put up uh, figure images, uh, inboxed images, of the brand new Ultimate Edition Seth Rollins Under the Giant. Of course, we've seen these before, but this was the first time we'd seen these in packaging. A uh, little spoiler alert, I guess. Later on today, I will have those in uh, my mailbox. So we will have those unboxed very soon on the channel here. So uh, very interesting, though. A big switch Rooney on the old Andre there. Instead of the soft goods uh, strap, one strap uh, singlet, uh, we went to the painted on model. Now, not a big fan of that move right here. We'll talk about when we unbox it. We'll see what it looks like in hand. That gives you the final opinion there, of course. But an interesting move from Andre switching to that. Uh, because I remember at uh, WrestleMania weekend, I believe the strap was shown, or, or maybe it was just a t-shirt. Now I'd have to go back and check my notes again. Uh, but an interesting move right there. And like I said, we'll talk about it when we unbox it here in the next couple of days. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that one. Seth Rollins, I'm not the biggest Seth Rollins guy ever, uh, but I love the jacket they have with him. Just a next level uh, jacket on Seth Rollins. So can't wait to dive into that one as well. We also saw new images of the brand new Top Picks Wave. We knew these were coming. Roman Reigns, really paint by number Roman Reigns. I got to double check, but it feels like that's something we've already had. It looks almost like a direct re-release. I'll have to investigate that one. 
The rock, once again, not a lot of meat on the bone for that rock. You do get the Brahma Bull side plates on the title belt, uh, but this looks like basically a new pair of trunks for rock, and that is it. And then, of course, Jimmy Uso. Some are going to say Jay. Whatever Uso you want to call him, we're getting Jimmy to match that Jay. Once again, not a lot of newness with this figure. An interesting one, Jimmy being in the top picks line. It is a head scratcher still to this day for me. And we saw the brand new basic set, a very strong basic set. Basics have really been on the rise lately. You still got some that are easy passes, more for the kids out there. But they do got some really interesting ones. Of course, Matt Riddle, a favorite of mine, so I'll probably be picking that Riddle up. Uh, we also saw Liv Morgan, an interesting version of Liv Morgan, a little something different than her normal attire. So that's a pickup for me as well. Uh, we also see Hulk Hogan, always going to pick up a Hulk Hogan figure if that's out there. Got to have a basic Hogan to go with the Ultimates and Elites we get on a regular basis. We also saw uh, John Cena and I believe they said at the Wrestlemania Superstar that this was the first John Cena with a molded on hat the hat is not removable here so an interesting one going to be a good one for customizers out there to grab the head off that put that on maybe an elite something like that mix some things up and then Pat McAfee got to think this will be a strong seller of course he dabbles in wrestling and he's got all of his uh, YouTube show all that other stuff so there's gonna be a lot of people looking for this one he is of course the chase so I'm picking up basically that whole set I think I will pick up that entire set of basics so you don't hear that very often very cool to see that one uh, but that's not it for some of the stuff that's coming. Of course, Elite Series 102 will also be at the doorstep here in the next day or two. We'll dive into that one. We've already unboxed uh, Sami Zayn from 102, so check out that review if you did miss that. But we will get the rest of those knocked out, knocked out here in the next week or so. So a lot of new wrestling. It's been a little dormant in wrestling figures for a while here on the channel. We've had a lot of Marvel Legends, though. Uh, but we're going to get back into some wrestling stuff very, very soon. And we're not done with the wrestling news this week. We're not even close to done, as we did see Unrivaled Series 12 glamour shot images and we always say it whenever glamour shot images come that means they're right around the corner so what i would expect this to start hitting from ringside collectibles in the next month or so discount code kyle as i always do say looks like jamie hater is the one of three thousand and a pretty big audible groan across the world when we saw this one is very cool to get that jacket with her very on point with her entrance jacket a lot of us would like that entrance jacket but it's only in the one of three thousand there is a regular version without the jacket a little bit disappointing but my guess is what AEW is going to do three four sets from now whatever it is they're going to re-release this jamie hater with a different paint scheme and they will include the jacket so i'm sure we'll get it eventually but uh, it's one of those things that kind of does make your fan base a little bit mad when it's the one of three thousand because even if they find the one of three thousand are they going to open the one of three thousand so a little bit of a di dilemma there all first world problems as they do say we got John Moxley as the one of 5,000. This one didn't really make uh, me too excited, i got to be honest with you. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one is in hand. We've had a lot of John Moxley's. Not sure if we really needed another one in this set. But as we always say, you got to get these people out on a regular basis. That's the way it goes. We're getting FTR once again. Always here for FTR. Not sure on these head scans. Once again, we do get two head scans here. So maybe the thought process is, yeah, I know our last set of FTR wasn't the best. We're giving you two heads this time. You can put one of those heads on that uh, former one and make them a little bit better, but I don't know. But a uh, shout out to my buddy Knick out there getting a head sculpt for him too. Man, that's a good day for him uh, <laughs> out there with FDR. But it'll be interesting to see how well these figures do. I don't know if everybody's going to like these. And it's, of course, from that Blood and Guts pack or long game set that they've been building over the last couple of years. So a lot of people completing that, they'll be happy about that one. Some fresh new blood with Jamie Hayter in this set is Private Party, another tag team. You guys know me, I always love getting a tag team in the same set, so I'm happy about that. Not sure if Private Party moves the needle. I mean, if the Young Bucks out there and FTR don't really move the needle, I don't know how well Private Party will. But their first figures, that's a little bit exciting here. It'll be interesting to have those at the table as well. So stay tuned for that video in the future. And then we did see some leaked images this week off of eBay, and I have to assume this is coming at us uh, sooner rather than later. It looks like there's going to be another Jade Cargill exclusive. Of course, we got the regular one in the Unmatched series. We did get the Amazon exclusive with a little different decor. Now now we're getting one it looks like probably a shop AEW exclusive maybe another Amazon one not exactly sure but we have seen images of that floating around so I'd have to imagine maybe the next pay-per-view that might be the exclusive I guess we'll wait and see on that one but if you're into the Jade Cargill figures it looks like we got another one on the horizon sooner rather than later now we dive into a few other things that came up this week. Figure collections. We've talked about their bone-crushing superstars. We unboxed both Blue Meanies, both Atom Bombs here on the channel, Brian Clark's. I uh, really did like those figures. They do look really, really good. And they did show in a major wrestling figure podcast blog 
From their table, they did show off a little bit of the prototype Jeff Jarrett and the old Aztec gear coming at us later this year. Very cool looking version of Jeff Jarrett. I'm here for that. We'd love an elite style version of that Jeff Jarrett one day, maybe if we're lucky. But we also did know this week, Gilberg, the Macho Man, Sonny Ono, and Ultimo Dragon all did go up for pre-order. So go to the Figure Collections website. You can pre-order these. They are supposed to arrive in August, late August, somewhere in that time frame. Very, very cool. I am very happy that there is no uh, variant on Macho and Gilberg. I don't really want variants of this line, and I know you don't got to collect them all, but I really do want to collect them all, and it makes me like, ah, oh, I should grab that, I should grab that. I like that they took the choice away from me, and I'm sure some of you people are in the same boat as I am sometimes. Uh, but Gilberg, what could you really do as a variant? Macho Man, though, is surprisingly, because I think there's a lot of different variants they could have done for Macho Man. Just changing the color, and bam, you got a new Macho Man figure. Looks like, at least as of this point, they are not going that direction. Can't say the same about Sunny Ono Ultimo Dragon. There is an exclusive version of that two pack as well. So I did just pre order the whole thing. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. You only live once, so I'm going to grab all of these for now. We'll see how it goes. But love Sunny Ono and Ultimo Dragon two pack. I love what they did there. I love the nod to the past. And like I said, these figures really are great. If you love Bone Crunchers, you got to be very, very happy about this line. And you got to hope for the continued success and growth of this line in the future. So head over to Figure Collections if you are looking for that one. Uh, Asylum Toys this week showed a little uh, pictures once again, and they did put the pre-order back up, and we've talked about that in the past on the channel. I'm not a big fan of the pre-orders going back up because I don't like people sitting on my money. I want people sitting on my money as little of time frame as possible. Well, I got in on the first round of pre-orders here. Now, six months later, whatever it's been, there's another round of pre-orders. Why couldn't I have just jumped into that one? I could have kept my money, had my money working for me in that six-month time frame. So that's always a dangerous line. Maybe it's just me, but it's a dangerous line with the consumer out there. Uh, but they did put them back up. And sometimes, and I don't know any inside baseball on this, but sometimes they put these things back up. And I, I assume Powertown did this as well because maybe they didn't have enough units. They needed some more units somehow to get a better cost factory savings, things like that. Not saying that's what Asylum did here. Not saying that's what Powertown did. But that's kind of what my gut kind of tells me. You get some more orders, all of a sudden, oh, now we saved two cents per unit and it all adds up. You know, nickel and dime, got to get the deal on every single side. So interesting one, but I am very excited about this Asylum line. We got the Road Warriors, Scott Norton and Buff Bagwell, of course, Vicious and Delicious. And then we got Earl Hebner times two. Very cool, going to fit with your Masters WWE Universe, your WWE Superstars, your Origins figures, whatever you want it to do. Kind of that same style and quality. Uh, very excited to see what these look like in hand, how they perform form in hand as well but they will be coming later this year they did announce series two of course is eddie guerrero and it sounds like there's going to be a black tiger head for eddie guerrero that is very cool especially if you go back to the old jacks classic superstars days when we were supposed to get a black tiger eddie guerrero it didn't happen wish it would have but uh, now maybe we'll finally get a black tiger eddie guerrero this way making people want to buy two different versions of this one so more to come on the asylum line should be interesting to see where that all ends up shaking out too now, how about a little bit of a Power Town update? Haven't heard a whole lot from Power Town. They sent that early April announcement saying, hey, our stuff is on the water. It's going to be arriving at the end of April, shipping end of April, early May. Haven't heard a word, haven't heard a peep yet. Uh, you know, it's just a very kind of uh, puzzling to me that we've heard so few things about Power Town. You know, Power Town Series 2, you think they would have already had that pre-ordered right now. Uh, now you're going to be waiting like another year for Series 2 if Series 2 even happens. Man, I have such high hopes for this line. You guys know this is going to be my modern day classic superstar. So I really want this to succeed. But there's so many questions. Where is it? Where are the faulty figures? Uh, what about the Remco line? They still have the post up saying we're going to announce it. In January the Remco line nothing going on there like I said series two nothing going on there at this point we know Jesse Ventura is involved in all this whoever wonder if they're watching your every move cell phones internet surveillance think about it and I guess my final question on power town for this week is does this line even exist no way not this time we created it not this time no not this time it's totally made up pure fiction it's fiction it's fiction we made it up we made this one up it's a made-up tale it's a total fabrication it never happened it never happened this one was invented by a writer not this time it never happened it's false it never happened it's a fake it's fiction it's an urban legend that never happened no way we got you not a chance not this time it never happened it never happened we made this one up it's fiction we made up this one. 
We made it up. Not this time. Wrong. Not this time. Not this time. You're wrong. Not this time. It never happened. I for sure hope it does because I really do want this once again. I want these in my collection, but man, we got to, you know what Jerry Reed always says. As always, Jerry Reed is exactly right. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed. We're going to hope for the best with Power Town. And hopefully with May coming in just a couple of days, we're going to get some kind of a big announcement, something uh, about where our figures are, where we're going to have them. I hope we have them by May but I'm not exactly sure if that will be possible. So more to come on the old Power Town team. And then we go to the retro corner of the week. And I guess Rob Halford, you know what he always says. Message from Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Step on the red, cross on the green, never take a ride in a stranger's machine, and always make sure you're burning on turbo power. Halford is always correct as well, but we're going to dive into some of the retro figures this week. And let's start it off with old Zombie Sailor. He did show off some pictures, some images of the mighty Hercules from the Power and Glory days. Very, very cool. And we do know, we talked about it last week, Zombie Sailor does have an elite style line coming. Hercules would be one of those guys that would transition to that line perfectly. Give us the big chain. Let's get that chain a swinging. Uh, very easy figure to make. Not a lot of bells and whistles unless they throw it back to the LJN day with all of his like uh, gladiator gear. But would love a Hercules in a uh, elite style scale. But very cool to get power and glory all these years later. One of my favorite tag teams. One of the most underrated tag teams of the late 80s, early 90s. Probably early 90s by now. Just a very cool one. So we do got that coming from Zombie Sailor showing that off once again. We also saw Zombie Sailor put up Series 2 of his retros uh, for a minimum quantity back up for pre-order. It sounds like they must have had some extras or some cancellations or whatever. Some some people that missed out were very happy this week when they got a second chance at Series 2. Uh, so always check those websites. That's what I always do say there. Uh, Hassel Toys this week showed off pictures and images of the Godwins. Man, I got to say it. These look really, really good. This line looks very promising in pictures uh, from what I've seen the line looks really great we'll see how they are in hand can't wait to see how they are in hand i did pre-order uh the first batches that went up for pre-order can't wait to see how these ones do look and how well they mix in with our hasbros as we say every week you got some that are going for the hasbro look like hastel toys the kwk figures which we're going to talk about here in a second those look more like the evolution of a hasbro you got zombie somewhere in between a little bit of evolution but a little bit of a nod to the past uh, just different takes on the same formula which i think you have to do and you have to make yourself different from your competition there's only so many dollars to go around then you take those wrestling dollars uh so there's only so much action figure dollars to go around. Then you only got so many wrestling dollars to go around. Then you only got so many retro dollars to go around. And then you got so many companies there. Uh, it just the plot thickens as you get a little closer to the end. So it'll be interesting where all these dollars do funnel to. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? Who's going to rise? Who's going to fall? Uh, you know, there's always somebody that's going to fall out of there. It's just, uh, it is business. So it's always going to be a tough one. We'll see who makes it. You got the Rush Collectibles in there too. Forgot to mention them. Figure collections as well. There's a lot of retros on top of the Mattel stuff as well. So I don't foresee all of them making it to the end of 2023. I think one of them or more of them might drop out of the race. We'll see what happens, though. Uh, it'll be an interesting sign. And what at the end of the day, wrestling fans do win on things like that. Competition, when companies compete against each other, the fans win, the consumer does win. So uh, we're in a glorious time right now, as I always do say. Uh, KWK, we talked about them uh, every week, it seems like here, but they did announce the signing of Ox Baker. Oh my gosh, crazy hair on that guy. Uh, old school, a little bit before my time. I have seen some Ox Baker matches in the past, but I absolutely love the signing of Ox Baker. I love some of these deep cut classic wrestlers. I know they're not for everybody, uh, but for people like me, I guess, I do like the signing of Ox Baker. Of course, he had the dreaded heart punch even before. For me, Mark Callis, the dreaded heart punch, just stopping people's heart with one punch. Can you believe that? Uh, but he did sign Ox Baker this week. KWK did. Now, the KWK also paid for the trademark for Ox Baker's family, helped them out there. So I know they get some negative stuff from time to time, but I mean, they helped out the whole family here for Ox Baker, trying to get their name registered so other companies, other things can't steal the license there. They are going to be owning that license, uh, and KWK helped them with that. So a lot of good stuff going on over there. I'm ready for some Ox Baker figures. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. So I can't wait for some of these figures to finally come to fruition so we can finally review these on the table as we talk about them for years years in some instances and uh, we just want them in our hand that's what we want at the end of the day and we want them all to be good of course of course we do
Now we're going to dive into some non-wrestling figure news. A lot of wrestling figure news this week, as you guys did see. Uh, but we did see May 3rd. Oh, yes, May 4th is right around the corner. So May 3rd, Hasbro is doing a live stream. I do anticipate them to put pre-orders up on May 4th. It'll be May 4th pre-orders. Makes sense with the old Star Wars theme. Uh, but May 3rd, we'll see what we're getting from Star Wars. Man, they need some huge victories there on the Star Wars team. We've got some okay stuff lately, at least in my book. But we're getting a lot of reuse. We're getting a lot of make the most out of your molds. And we're getting a lot of higher price points, which none of us do like, of course. I was on a figure hunt. Uh, where was it? It was the figure hunt video I did this week where it was my trip to the Kane County Toy Show. The road trip there. We stopped at a Walmart. I saw some cool figures, but at $28.99... Man, that's a tough spend on some of those Black Series. So we're going to see where that line goes. Be a lot clearer come May 3rd. So mark your calendars, I guess is what I'll say there. We did see this week as well, uh, April O'Neil. Of course, April is the month of April over there at NECA, but we saw two different reveals. We are finally getting a re-release of the cartoon April. A lot of people did not like that figure because of the head sculpt. Now, all these years later, the wrong is going to be righted, I guess is what we'll say. We get, I think, three heads with this April O'Neil. So what you could really do is go back. If you have that old April O'Neil, use one of those new heads for that, of course. Then you have two April O'Neils in your collection. But if you got a big Turtles collection, if you've been following along with the cartoon line, you can use April in a couple of different scenes on your display if you need to. So nothing wrong with another April O'Neil figure. Going to make a lot of people happy because that's a glaring hole in a lot of Turtle Collectors uh, collections, really, at the end of the day. So Ultimate April O'Neil coming later this year, I guess. We also saw a little Ultimate movie uh, April O'Neil. I'm not sure if exactly if it's Ultimate, but it will be her in the yellow jacket. Kind of a, a little crossover because wasn't she only in the yellow jacket for like one brief scene or something in the movie if my memory serves me well like a young Bob Dylan. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how well that one goes. They showed off a little arcade cabinet as well. Uh, we've seen a lot of people having those. I think I even have one in my collection as well. A lot of people use that in their sewer layers. Apparently NECA is going to give us a little arcade cabinet uh, as well. But a lot of April stuff this week. And it is the month of April. So NECA does this the last couple of years. It does make sense. It is on brand. There you go. So if you're looking for April O'Neil, pre-orders should be up pretty soon. I'm guessing the movie one will be Walmart. And then, of course, Cartoon will be a Target one. So look to your local retailers for help with that one. And we did see this week, we knew it was coming. Uh, it was the worst kept secret around for the last six weeks or so. But Snake Mountain did go up for pre-order. Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, DJC Collectibles, Target, Amazon, you name it. There's no way you're not going to be able to get a Snake Mountain if you really, really want one. It went up for pre-order everywhere. Mattel Creations as well, forgot to mention them. Uh, coming this fall, so very excited. Can't wait to build out that universe. We got Gray Skull, we got Eternia coming. Now we got Snake Mountain as well. Very cool to be able to build out a universe in the Masters of the Universe. So Snake Mountain, if you want it, check out your uh, pre-order places right now to pick one up. And then you can't have a week without some Marvel Legends announcements. We know how that goes. Every week there's a pre-order, there's something going on, there's something being talked about, which really is a smart business practice. You always got to have your name out there, some pre-orders going on, and that's exactly what the Marvel Legends team did this week. As we saw Cersei, Black Knight, we knew that one was coming, but it is an Amazon exclusive. So if you're looking for that two-pack, head on over to Amazon. And then we also saw Mr. Fix-It. It looks like the Build-A-Figure is going to get a little cleaned up, a little bit different accessories, things like that. And we're going to, bam, have it as a Walmart exclusive. So some people are pretty down on that. It's a good one as a Walmart exclusive because it was already out there once. Now we got a little extra bells and whistles. If you want it, get it. If you don't, you can pass on. That's the way it goes there. But Mr. Fix It coming to Walmart. And then the big one this week is, uh, for a lot of people, an interesting one. Maybe it's not as big a news to me as maybe others out there, but it is the Mattel Hasbro superhero team up. Uh, they're teaming up on some certain brands, going to share some properties across the two to, you know, why get more sales? That's why they're doing that. They're doing this for business reasons. We know that Mattel and Hasbro sales are down. Toys in general sales are down because of the economy, inflation, things like that, hurting a lot of uh, Hasbro. Hasbro brands, Necker brands, I'm sure all of them are hurting a little bit more from a couple years ago. I think that's safe to say. And Mattel and Hasbro are teaming up for games like Uno. Now all of a sudden you got Transformers Uno. Very simple tie-in, very simple crossover, back and forth with different board games. I think they talked about Barbie Monopoly. Makes a lot of sense. There's so many different Monopoly versions of different characters, different properties and things. Well, now you're bringing Barbie into that. You'll probably have a Transformers Monopoly eventually. I think there's going to be a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Easy crossovers that benefit both. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh my gosh, now I can finally get Rey Mysterio and Spider-Man gear. Maybe that is a possibility, but I think that's a little bit farther down the line. I think that's a little deeper in the rabbit hole. But it is possible, I guess. Anything is truly possible, especially if it means money 
for both companies. But I think primarily this is more of a thing like Uno and Monopoly and video games. Things like that is a little bit easier to do, a little bit easier to stomach. I don't know how deep it'll go into action figure lines, but could be very cool. We've seen historically a ton of different crossovers in the Ninja Turtle headspace and Transformers and G.I. Joe. We've seen some of that. So could we see some Transformers Marvel ones, which I guess we've kind of seen, haven't we? Wasn't there like a... What was it? Well, I guess that's already in there. Transformers and uh, Marvel are on the same. They're both Hasbro, so that's a bad example. But we could see maybe wrestling Transformers. All of a sudden, it's a Randy Orton that turns into a truck. Maybe they could do something like that. I don't know how well that would sell, but I think a lot of us are hoping, okay, we can get Rey Mysterio and Spider-Man gear. We can get this and that. We get Rey and Flash gear, Rey and Silver Surfer gear. I'm just picking on Rey Mysterio because it's easy, but I don't know. And we see this across the board. We see this a ton of times with food crossover. How many times do you see, like, there's Ghost Energy Drink with Sour Patch Kids, which is a Mondelez product, doing a crossover. We're seeing like protein powders. You see Chips Ahoy in a protein powder crossovers. Uh, we see like Oreo flavored uh, whatever, you know, or even here's a good one, like Reese's Peanut Butter Cup flavored Oreos. That's a crossover between companies. We see this a ton in food. We just don't see it a lot in toys. We see it every once in a while, but not on a regular basis. But this sounds like they're tipping their toes into that. And at the end of the day, you follow the money wherever you go. And at the end of the day, if they can make money off of a Spider-Man Rey Mysterio and they think it is a viable option and everybody can get a little bit of their money, I think that could work out. But you could see the other thing where, you know, a regular Elite's 22 bucks, whatever it is, $22, $24, depending where you're at. All of a sudden, that Rey Mysterio is $29.99 because you're paying different properties off. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how that goes, how that resonates with the fan base as well. But a lot to come on this in the future. I'm not getting my hopes up really high quite yet, but it's something to definitely pay attention to. So stay, stay on board on the channel. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff uh, for the future there. And that is it for the toy news this week. Looking over my list, I don't have anything else. Uh, we do got Album of the Week, and Album of the Week is a very interesting one, and it's one I normally wouldn't listen to, but I was on my road trip to the Kane County Toy Show this week, and I'll talk more about that in weekly purchases, so check out that video. But uh, the Album of the Week for me was Paul Gilbert's Dio album. It just came up in my Amazon playlist, and I'd heard this was coming out. I'm by no means a big Paul Gilbert fan. What was he in? Uh, Mr. Big and Racer X, I think, is the guitarist. But he did do a Dio cover album, all instrumental Dio cover album. So now when you think of Dio, you think of that magical, majestic voice or the little guy. You're thinking of one of those two. Uh, but definitely a powerful voice, one of the most powerful voices in all of heavy metal of all time, for sure. So you're like an instrumental Dio tribute? Well, what Paul Gilbert did here was he did his voice on guitar. So it's almost like the guitar is singing the song. It was really crazy. It really kind of messed with my mind a little bit. No, by no means am I going to listen to this a million times, but it is worth checking out. If you're not going to listen to the whole album, pick out your favorite Dio song, check that one out, because it is very, very cool, very inventive, very kind of genius on Paul Gilbert's uh, style there. I, I really liked what I heard there, and I thought it was really good and definitely worth checking out. So I want to give a little special shout out to that. You know I love a little Dio action, and uh, Paul Gilbert did a very good job on this album for what it is. It's not one of those ones you're going to listen to a million times, but like I said, it's worth checking out at least one time. It's just very cool, very genius, really, at the end of the day. So that is the album of the week, Paul Gilbert, the old Dio album. So there it is. That is the week of toy news. What are you most excited about? What are you thinking about these toy news? What do you think about Power Town? Is it coming? Place your bets on the table. Will we see those figures in May? Fingers crossed. And I hope with the Nitro stage, hopefully we have better news next week. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a tough way to get to 5,000, but we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Uh, I hope for the best there. We'll see what happens, I guess, is all you can really do at this point. But of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell because we got videos every single day and then some. And of course, don't forget about the Patreon channel. Tons and tons of stuff over there. A lot of stuff early on the Patreon, as you guys do know. And best of all, you do support the channel and all the content. You can also support the channel. ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget to hit me up and follow along on social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for the toy news of the week, I'm Kyle. I'll see you guys real soon, and you know what I'm doing. I'm rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling my way into the weekend.